So, Carol Ann, would you like to join us? So, we're fortunate today to have the artist who you just saw. Um, I was, of course, using my mediated experience to take notes, and whenever I did this, you, had, you and I had this exchange just a minute ago. No, I'm not texting, I'm not ignoring you, I'm taking notes, or I'm trying to find something to contribute to the conversation, right? So, her question at the end there, I think, was really, for me, interesting. Where are all these things going to go? Will they just die these small deaths? And earlier she said, in speaking about cable television and the promise it once held, trying to get people to see something was so difficult. And that beautiful cut where you jump to Warhol and he's saying, oh, it gives you something to do. It gives you something to do. So I guess that's one of my questions for you guys as you experience the piece is, um, now that everything's accessible, quote unquote, on YouTube, do they just die the a death the minute they go up? for have us reflect on Carol Ann's last question she was asking us. And this is just going to be playing in the background, right, Carol Ann? So do you find yourself going back to things on YouTube? Or you experience it once, and then it, it's, it's gone from your life, even if it might be just entering someone else's? Okay. Um, yeah, I guess just in response to your question about going back I think a big part of it is sharing. And I think in a way it is very isolating just because, you know, you can sit on your computer all day and look at it, but you can also incorporate friends and almost make it an interactive experience, not with the video necessarily, but with other people, which is what I think is kind of interesting about that. What you mentioned, just at the same time isolating and bringing people together, but not really connecting with the work so much. And when, when you do that, do you ever think about what happens with that connection? Well, I can't say I do very much, but it is something, I mean, mm -hmm. the video could be deleted next week and then that's completely lost, whereas, you know, you may have a painting in a gallery that's much more permanent and definitely archived. It doesn't seem like these videos are really in any permanent archive or database, and I don't know if they should be, but it's definitely something to think about. Yes. That last point is, for, for us curating the show, really significant, is what's the balance between a permanent archive that we can all access versus ephemera or something that's there and gone? And you know, I wonder, as you think back to the bodies of work that you've been a part of building, how you're thinking about that, particularly with projects like you know, at the Getty and this archiving of history, but also this bringing it into the present so that it's alive and accessible. Can you speak to that? Well, I don't think that there's ever been any real education or history about electronic media. Um, it hasn't been very accessible to many people to see it. Um, and that was kind of our struggle as, as makers using this medium was how do you get the work out to people when it didn't have any value, it didn't have any commercial value, it wasn't film, it wasn't television, and to many people it wasn't art. But uh, it, this isn't alien to this particular medium. I mean, photography kind of went through the same thing. I mean, it started as kind of an archiving medium, as did video, uh, a portable video. So uh, for me, I guess I stopped making video uh, in about 1996 because I saw this need to educate, preserve, uh, make accessible this medium, which I loved. But even to this day, people still talk about this as my film. They still say film. There is a hierarchy of media and, and, and moving image media. And people don't know the difference. And that really upsets me because now everything that's digitized, it just becomes one thing. Just like our landscape has kind of become one thing. You know, a uh, raw store. Avant's, you know, I mean, a Starbucks, a Ross store, a Starbucks, Avant's, you know, in every corner. Like, which corner am I supposed to be on? Because it's the same configuration of stores. I'm lost. Well, that's what I feel about our media. It's all become very homogenized. It's all the same. And you can't tell the difference. And it's all about time. It's all these bits. When you go on YouTube, it's got to be within nine, ten minutes. So. Early video used to be, there wasn't equipment to edit, so you would edit in camera, and you'd put in a 30-minute tape, and your piece would be 30 minutes. <laughs> 
well, how many people are going to watch 30 minutes on television now of one artwork? They're just not going to do it. But how long do you look at a painting? The average time a person looks at a painting is six seconds. So why should we expect them to sit and watch a 30-minute video? I do. <laughs> I mean, I like watching it. So, I mean, it's kind of a... It's kind of a question that I constantly am asking myself, and that's why I made this tape. It's like, I love YouTube. I'm addicted to YouTube. I mean, I'll go in it. Everything that you saw on this tape came from YouTube, except for me. Um, even Christian's interview came from YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I teach my class with YouTube. I love YouTube. But yes, you're right. There's no archiving. There's no monitoring of YouTube, and eventually YouTube is going to be totally commercial, just like cable became totally commercial. And that's kind of the, just a thought that I wanted to put out there. I wanted people to think about that. The piece behind us, by the way, is my own artwork. It's a piece I did in 19, it started in 1986, I finished in 1988. It was the first time anybody made a vertical video. I used a brand new technology called a camera remote. It wasn't even mark on the market yet. It's a, basically a tripod with a brain that makes the camera go 360 degrees, and you can do the speeds. I went on the, I actually went to the locations. <laughs> I went to the East Coast and the West Coast and shot this, and the soundtrack's done by Christian Marclay who at the time was in his 20s, he had never done a video, and he did this as a performance to picture. So I wanted to actually put an actual artwork in the gallery, since we're in a gallery, and kind of see it. Yeah. Well, and the irony of it both being present for us, but not necessarily the sole focus. Uh -huh. I know you've had a question or a comment. Well, next has already happened. Video is already done. I mean, video is about tape, and we, all, we already know that they're not going to make tape anymore. So if you embrace video, which is electronic tape, I mean, I watched my own medium within my own lifetime become extinct. <laughs> I mean, how many artists can say that they embraced a medium and within their lifetime it's gone, it's disappeared? And not only that, but my artwork in its original state, the machines are going to disintegrate, and they're not going to exist. So then what do we do? Then how do we see it? Well, of course, you have to evolve that medium. You have to change into another format. And I mean, Carolyn, but is it the same? Do you, sorry to, do you have a sense of, of what, what our post-video medium is going to be? That's a huge question, and it's not on you to answer it alone, but do you have a sense of where we're going in a post-video moment? Well, some people believe that it's going to be actually implanted in our bodies. So, you know, I mean, a, a chip that you can actually determine the information, what you see. Um, I mean, that's way out there, but, you know, I, I, you know, got my master's degree in interactive communications in 1980, and at that time, we all thought satellite technology was, you know, the cat's meow, and that was where it was going to go. And I was one of the only artists in the program, and I was just completely convinced that this was going to revolutionize everything. But I also thought the Xerox machine was a huge revolution, and the fax machine was. And then there was ATM, and then there was the cell phone. And, you know, VCRs, don't forget, 1985. 1985. When I say you couldn't tape things, you know, you couldn't copy things, you couldn't copy things. You had to take your camera and shoot it off of the TV set. So, you know, I mean, we have to just think about how fast within our lifetimes things are evolving, things are changing. So, you know? when some of you were in high school, did any of you have MySpace pages? I see some guilty smiles. <laughs> how many of those pages are still up? 
you pull them down? Why? Why did you guys pull them down? Awkward silence. Why? Why did you guys pull them down? Why was that social media of the moment that less than a decade ago was the thing? Why is that no longer so present in your in your life or your practice? It's like the, new, the new thing. So MySpace kind of was, you know, it was old stuff. So. so you moved on. Yeah, basically to b bigger, better things. Do Do any of you feel what's the balance for you between the the distraction of new things, or now in this case old things, and the depth, the possibility of depth of new things, whether you're talking about satellite or VHS technology or the fact that I could Skype my nephews last night, even though they don't live anywhere near me geographically, which to me is an amazing Star Trek moment. But for you guys, what's that balance between the distraction and depth of technology in your life? Was that an easy change to Facebook? Does anybody have a past digital life floating around online that you're embarrassed about or that you'd like to take away from the digisphere? You don't have to tell us what it is, but I'm curious if any of you have something circulating. Nobody. I got rid of my MySpace because it was, I was younger. I was younger and the pictures and all the information on it were, of course, you know, about me when I was at a younger age. Now, or now that I'm older, you know, Facebook seemed more professional at the time. Um, I didn't have the same pictures on there. I didn't have the same friends, you know, who were from middle school and high school, which I didn't really care to associate with too much anymore. And it was just another step towards being, I guess, grown. So because we want to associate with you, um, we have refreshments for you, so we're going to break and keep moving the conversation. Carol Ann's going to stay, and then we want to invite you guys after refreshments, which we'll describe in a second, to make your own videos and upload them. Um, so please join us in the back. We have coffee, water, and thank you for being here.